how do I start a video that I've literally been wanting to make and fantasizing about making for years? I have a literary agent. <laughs> I did it. We made it. We're out of the trenches. We have climbed out and I don't have trench foot. Thank God. <laughs> and welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie. If you don't know me, I have an agent now. I can't believe I actually get to say that. Like I have goosebumps still just saying it. If you don't know, or if this is, if you're new to my channel or if it's been a while or you don't know what's going on, I have been querying a book that I've affectionately titled Cruel Summer off the Taylor Swift song. It does have an actual title. I'm just not sharing it yet. So for the purposes of the video, it's Cruel Summer. That's what everyone knows it as. It is a soulmate, AU, rivals to lovers, a professional tennis romance novel. I wrote the first draft of it in two months back in January 2022, and then I revised the book and started querying it in September of 2022. So it's been about a year. We'll get into it. And now we're here in January 2024, and I have signed a contract, and I can now proudly announce that I am represented by Trinica Sampson at Newly Literary Agency speechless still and it's been like a month crazy so let's go over a little bit of what happened i hopefully will have a longer vlog with my real-time updates as i was you know going through the query trenches with cruel summer unfortunately for some reason my original like first round of querying that i did for my fantasy novel the wrath king nowhere to be found i don't know where she is i'm so sorry to that information that knowledge is lost but before i actually show like all of like kind of the craziness that has surrounded this book from the beginning i just kind of wanted to give a very sit down chatty story time of kind of what happened how i got my agent the whirlwind that has been the last three months <laughs> never would have expected this on october 1st let me tell you let's start all at the very beginning i originally sent a query to new leaf literary in february of 2023 and this was kind of a shot in the dark new leaf literary is one of the biggest literary agencies that I know of at least. If you're unfamiliar, it represents a lot of very famous and like incredible authors such as Lee Bardugo, Roshani Chachki, Holly Black, Victoria Aveyard, like <laughs> those are some of the people that are represented by New Leaf Literary. It's actually really funny because I always thought about New Leaf and I was always very interested in them, even way back in like 2018 when I took a publishing course in college for my creative writing degree and I actually had to write a query letter, or like practice writing a query letter during that class. And we had to pick a real life agent that we would send it to, even if the book wasn't done yet, which the book that I was writing at the time still isn't written, but I literally addressed it to New, New Leaf Literary. So they've been on my radar for a while. The fact that I'm represented by them now is bonkers to me, but the reason I actually ended up up querying the specific agent that I did query was because they had recently negotiated a book deal for a queer sports romance which ding 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 that is what Cruel Summer is so I was like hey I got one of those I sent it into the ether and didn't think about it again eight weeks passed which is basically like they're like okay if we don't respond to you in eight weeks it's pretty much a no so I was like okay fine whatever and then on October 9th I got an email from Trinica who was not the original agent that I queried she is working as a literary associate along with the agent that I had queried and is building their own list and so they said they were interested in the full if it was still available and at this point I was already pivoting to work on something else. I was working on Be Gay Self Crime Drink Blood. This is the big event that kind of happened and shattered my entire plans for Be Gay Self Crime in NaNoWriMo last year. If you're like, what the fuck happened with that? This is what the fuck happened. And so I was like, um, of course. Yeah, you can have the full, like, here you go. Hope you enjoy. And then on October 23rd, I got another email that they had devoured Cruel Summer over the weekend and wanted to jump on a call to talk about this book, the edits and other projects that I had. And so uh, cue a lot of screaming and just general staring in disbelief at a wall and a lot of anxiety because, oh boy, I thought it was gonna throw up the entire Wednesday that we had our call because I was so, so nervous. Didn't need to be. I jumped on the call with Trinica and immediately I really clicked with them. I think that was really important to have kind of immediately of like this very much felt like we were on a very similar level. And I'll talk about more of this later, but they said that they loved the book and we talked about the things that they love and then they asked me why I had written it as an MLM uh, novel basically um, as a queer woman instead of writing it you know in another fashion and so if you didn't know Cruel Summer is originally MLM or Achillian or male male romance and I had written it as that for a few personal reasons which I did describe to them and they're very understanding of and I think it's some very common things that happen around queer women you know I've talked about it previously before I'm not going to get into it too much here but I can in a future video if people are interested in that in good faith but basically I had struggled with my body 
body and my identity and when I started writing Cruel Summer it was just easier uh, to write it as MLM it was you know I didn't have to think as much about it it wasn't really you know it's much easier to do it that way and so I did and then I created under that basically Trinica was like I really love this book but with it being a debut and with me being a woman it would be a tough sell with like writing spicy MLM books um, especially within our current climate and that could hurt my career before it even started and I totally agree I'd actually been thinking about this in terms of a few other rejections I had gotten if part of the reason why I was getting rejections on queries and also on one or two of my fulls was because it was male male and not uh, WLW or women loving women you know and I'm just I'm not a queer man <laughs> it's, it's not who I am so I knew it was going to be a tough sell I knew it was going to be quite a hurdle when it comes to debuting and so Trinica asked if I would be willing to make the book sapphic instead of a Killian and I thought about it and I decided to agree I decided at least to give it a test run I talked to my friends about this my writing partners my critique partners and stuff and we really discussed it I started writing rewriting the book as sapphic and I was like this is exactly the same <laughs> it's just women instead of men and the core of the book really stays the same the heart of it is the same I mean it still has the soulmates that was the thing that I loved about Trinica is Trinica was just like I love the soulmate aspect of it I love that in fan fiction and they would like to bring it more into the traditional spaces and stuff and I wholeheartedly agree I love the soulmate trope it's one of my favorite things I love playing around with it y'all know this I've written two of them this is the one that worked I gender swapped the book and that is why I rewrote every single word of Cruel Summer through October and November <laughs> that was the big reason why I decided to do that and then like you know it wasn't so I could turn around and query it again obviously I think that's probably what many of you probably thought if you were thinking about that if you were wondering but it was at the advice of basically it was like a giant R&R &R. the gender swap was the main thing but there's also some other things that I wanted to change anyway from the pacing of the book and Trinica agreed that those were some things that it also were some minor plot like changes to the structural beginning and that it would just be stronger that way I was like that's so funny that you bring this up my critique partners were also telling me this like all on the same page here which was really nice and so then I rewrote the book and on November 29th I sent it back to Trinica and because I was really worried that I'd maybe like fucked up the edits I like had a full kind of full-blown spiral but I was very like on edge for about a week and then on December 5th the day after my birthday the day after I turned 25 best birthday present ever they sent me a email saying that they wanted to work for me in my career and they would wanted to represent me with the books and they really liked the edits that I'd made with Cruel Summer and that they just really wanted to work with me and um that was really exciting. So I didn't say yes immediately. If you have an offer, uh, it is industry standard to send uh, everyone else who has your full request or anyone who has your query that would you would be interested in working with still, uh, sending them a message that you do have an offer of representation. And if they're interested in offering as well, they have two weeks, if not, that's fine. And so after this, I did schedule another meeting with Trinica just to talk about other things, what it would be like working with New Leaf and being an author for New Leaf and eventually what it would be like to go out on submission internal screaming this and it's, it's I feel like it's hard to explain and I didn't really understand what people are talking about um before I had this other meeting with Trinica and I just it really slid into place that they understood my vision for this book they loved what I loved about the book they suggested edits for the story that were ones that I already knew I had to implement ones that I was already excited about doing and just seeing our visions align in such a way I knew that they were going to be the right agent for me um, but I was still going to give the other agents an opportunity obviously to offer and I would talk to them as well but talking to Trinica made me very excited not just to work on the book but also to enter into this contract and work towards publishing this book with Trinica this is it's always been a kind of secret fear of mine is losing my sense of the book to what someone else wants and not having that alignment and making changes that don't feel like they're right and I worried that it would feel like that and I'd have to compromise in order to get published and that has always been a fear of mine and I know that might come later truly it might happen with an editor with at a publishing house or something like it's possible that that could happen but I really do feel like Trinica and I are on a very similar level when it comes from what we want from my book and from my stories and that is just was so reassuring and I felt so good coming off the call and um, because it was just like it was like it just snapped into place and it was so reassuring because you know you hear horror stories about agents and like not you know really grooving with the author and the author making a lot of like changes that they don't agree with in the long run but they just want to be published so bad that they do it anyway like those are the horror stories I hear of and I know that sometimes I get a little bit in my head about what I want from a story and what I believe is the core of the story and just to have my agent really understand that was really great for me and my peace of mind it's just it's crazy honestly that someone really understood my writing and understood me after not even really knowing me at all and just reading my book and still understood me in my book it was you know that's the level of understanding that like my friends have but my friends know me 
my writing partners and my critique partners, like they know me. <laughs> they know what I'm looking for in a story. Also, if you're wondering, Turnica will be representing me for my career for all of my books, not just my romance. I am lucky enough that Turnica also really loves fantasy and has recently kind of come more into romance and really likes the combining of them. So romance, fantasy, everything in between. And as it collides and blends together, all of that, very interested in all of my, my stories, which is really cool. I mean, they were literally like, I went and looked at your website and all your stories seem really cool. And I was like, oh my God, thank God I updated my website with all my new shit. <laughs> Good on me. I did get emails back from other agents. I will have a stats video with everything included. Uh, this is kind of that kind of out of the scope of this video specifically because it's more of a story time. And one had to step aside for personal reasons. Another decided that the voice wasn't for them and a couple others just didn't respond, which is totally fine. It's a tough industry and it was also really close to like the holidays. So, like I get it. So on December 21st, I emailed Trinica and accepted their offer of representation, uh, which leads us to now where I've signed my contract. The digital ink is dry and I'm just so excited to see where this leads me and my career. And I have a literary agent now after trying for a couple of years, several years. <laughs> Saying it out loud still does not feel real. So what now? I just finished my next round of developmental edits on Monday of this week and sent them off. So I'll be doing another line edit and probably then it's on submission. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Until then, I'll be working on proposals and outlines for other books that I could possibly work on and figure out what story I'd like to tell next. Uh, you know, that's always the advice, you know, whether you're querying or on submission, always be working on the next thing that you can sell. It's the hamster wheel that never ends. I love it because I love writing, but it is a little stressful. I won't lie to you, but I have my agent now to help me through that because <laughs> y'all know that I am slightly neurotic when it comes to writing and also a workaholic. And now before I leave you, I do just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has been on this journey with me. Whether you have commented on my videos, come to my live streams, join the Trouble Stream Discord, or you've just been a lurker kind of in the background, you know, just give me those views and those likes and stuff. And you have been a piece of me and my writing journey. I would not be here making this video if it wasn't for AuthorTube. Two years ago, I started Cruel Summer and it was just a fun project that I was using to find my love of writing again. I was feeling burnt out and frankly a little disheartened by my previous querying journey and just feeling like nothing was clicking for me. And then I got drunk on a live stream at the end of January Mo, and that set off a series of events that truly the butterfly effect <laughs> means that I'm here. That one decision altered the course of my life because having so many people, meeting friends, having them believe in me and encourage me to continue the story and to seek representation with the story, unbelievable to me. Without my friends and other writers, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be the writer that I am today. I wouldn't have had the courage to do this. I wouldn't have believed in my story and I wouldn't have had the support that I needed in order to take this leap into querying this book that I really thought was just silly and didn't not worth anything. And it turns out it was very worth it and that I love it and I hope one day you'll all get to read it and that you'll continue with me on this journey and I truly cannot thank you all enough. It is unbelievable. So thank you for being here and thank you for sticking with me. All of my craziness and chaotic nature and whiplash with the multiple projects that I've worked on in the last year. <laughs> So now that the sentimental mushiness is out of the way, I have just passed one hurdle. So let's, we're into another one. I'm definitely gonna have many more, but I am gonna be continuing to document my journey here on YouTube, on Instagram, in my newsletter, everywhere that you can find me. And I'm still just gonna be here, same old me, hanging out with you guys and hopefully helping you along with your journey as well. I do plan to make some more videos around querying and my journey and experience. So if you have any questions about that process, please do leave them down below so I can answer them in a future video. I'll be making a stats kind of video and talking about my actual query and what I did to research and what I did to help and all the resources that I had so I can give that back to you now that I've been successful in that. So if you're interested in any of that, I would love for you to subscribe to see all of that and more of my rambling face. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to like it down below. And yeah, I have an agent. <laughs> I'm agented. <sighs> I still can't believe it. I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. I don't know how to end a video like this. <laughs> Bye.